We ready to rock? All right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I just want to bless you. I just want to to share and release some of the stuff that's been jacking me up. Um, oh, and I just want to I want to help us get past a certain mindset that I see a lot of when discussing our belief systems, theology, doctrines, whatever you want to call it, just our belief systems. I want to I want to address a common thought process that I see that can be a hindrance. And I just want to lay the foundation that's already been laid. And it comes from several different writers of the Bible. But I just want to say I honor Paul. I honor Peter. I honor James and John and every contributor to the scriptures that we have because this is the only reason that we can begin to renew our minds to the truth is because we have the written. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's like an eyelash or something. So, I want to clear that. I'm not dishonoring anybody. We actually, here's the mindset. Let me lay out the foundation of the mindset first. And then we can talk about it and see what God says about it and what even Paul says about it. So there's a mindset that I've run into quite a few times that we think that Paul, Peter, James, John, um, the writers of the New Testament, that they had it all figured out and that we aren't to go and grow into higher revelations than what they did, than what they had discovered. But the truth is, and I love that Paul, that it's in the scripture and it's recorded, that Paul in Philippians 3 says that he isn't thinking that he has attained He's not thinking that he has attained it yet, you know, the, he hasn't got it all figured out yet. And it's in Philippians 3, da da da, brothers and sisters. So he's talking about, he's trying to, to lay hold of, he's pressing on, sorry I'm not more prepared, I was just getting jacked up with some stuff this morning with the Lord. So Paul's talking about the goal of life. That's what it's labeled in uh, this Bible for chapter 3. The goal of life. <laughs> Philippians 3. So he talks about his former um, strivings in Judaism and how he was excelling beyond all his peers. And then he gets to the point where he says he counts all that stuff I count everything as a loss compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with Him. <laughs> growing acquainted with Jesus, not the traditions of Judaism. Not, And that can be applicable to, we are not striving to grow in acquaintance with our traditions, things that cap us. You know, we can be really good. We can get really good at tradition and max out, but that's not the goal. The goal of life, <laughs> like I like that. I just saw that that's what it's labeled in this, is to be acquainted and grow more deeply and thoroughly with Christ. So it says, he says, for his sake I lost everything and I considered it all garbage so that I may gain Christ. Like, literally, to gain Christ. To, to drop it all. If you're not gaining Christ in what you're doing, even if it's got Christianese wrapped around it, if you're not having Christ formed in you, drop it. <laughs> it's That's not the goal of life, is to not... The goal of life is not to master something that keeps you 
diminished in your true value in what God says is possible and who Jesus is. And I want to get to that in a minute. So he says, he doesn't have any righteousness of his own. It's all his righteousness. He didn't have any righteousness derived from obedience to the law and its rituals. But, Possessing genuine righteousness comes only through faith in Christ and the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. By faith, you've been made the righteousness of God through Christ. And that's that's a right, that's the righteousness topic that righteousness is one single playing field for everybody. No one's more righteous than anyone else. It's Jesus <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> and so you, if you've accepted Jesus... You're righteous. You're just as righteous as any mega preacher, super holy person you can think of. Your righteousness level is the same. You're right with God. Oh. So, he counted that all loss. So he's gained the righteousness of Christ, not by obeying the law. But, so he says in this, he wants to know him experientially becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in the same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers. I'm going to talk about immortality one of these days. Romans 8.11 talks about it. Many other places talk about it. Because he wants to share and fellowship Okay, so he's going to share in fellowship with his sufferings to be continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did, so that I may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. So he doesn't think that he's... He says not that I have already obtained it, this goal of being Christ-like, or have already been made perfect. See, so Paul hasn't hit the mark yet. He's striving for, as we'll see in the next couple verses. I haven't already obtained this goal of being Christ-like, or, and I haven't already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ, Jesus, took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do... I forget what lies behind me, and I reach forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection, should have this attitude. And if in any respect you have a different attitude, that too God will make clear to you. So like... <laughs> <laughs> only let us stay true to what we have already attained. So he says, follow my example, follow me as I follow Christ. So the thing that I wanted to mention was, the, the, the apostles are amazing. And if you ever get a chance to talk to them, I don't, this might offend you, it might not, but they can talk to you and, and you can talk to them. If you ever get a chance to, and you honor them, it, it, what you honor, you, what you honor is attracted to your life. You know, if you honor drugs, drugs will find their way to your life. If you honor pornography, pornography will find its way into your life. If you honor holiness, holiness will find its way into your life. Honor. It's almost like uh, the law of attraction that that they are like really hype on right now in the secular. It has a spiritual principle behind it, and that's why, to a degree, it does work. Because what you honor will gravitate towards you. So, you pull in reality. So that's why we honor the Word, we honor Christ, we honor the Father, and we pull them closer to us. He says, if you, if you draw near to me, I draw near to you. If you start honoring him with your heart, he starts coming closer to you. He can work with you more. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I just want to point us to Christ. Okay, so listen to Luke, Luke 9, sorry, Luke 9, at the Transfiguration. An interesting thing happened after Jesus met with Moses and Elijah. They were departing. Peter realized what was happening, said we should build three tents. You know, and it says, but even as he was saying this, as Peter was talking, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them. And they were <laughs> greatly afraid as they entered the cloud, the cloud of God, the, you know, the, the glory cloud and the Shekinah. Then a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. That would be Jesus, my chosen one. Listen and obey and yield to him. This is the Amplified. Listen to him. A lot of the translations say, hear him. Listen to Jesus. Okay, focus on Jesus. We don't want to keep... A lot of times like we see something amazing and we want to build a tent and camp around a move of God. But God says, hear Jesus. Listen to Jesus, obey Jesus, follow Jesus, keep pursuing him because he's the truth, the way, the life. He has, he is everything you're supposed to be. He's the blueprint, he's the model. <laughs> he is the, uh, Adam was a, uh, what's the word say? Adam was a type of him, to come, of him who was to come. Well now him who was to come came and the old Adamic race has been has been put aside, has been uh, extinctualized, and we are supposed to be a new creation, a new species entirely. The Adamic race died. Now we have a Jesus race, a Christ-like race that needs to realize who they are. All of us, we need to learn, we need to know, <laughs> we need our eyes open to see and our ears open to hear. So, so, Father, Daddy, Daddy says, listen to him, my chosen one, my son, my beloved son. You know, this is before anyone was regenerated. So, the New Testament didn't start until Jesus was glorified, until he was crucified and glorified. So then, we need to go to Hebrews 1. And for a new covenant believer... We are in a new covenant now. Hebrews is clutch. You, you have to dig into Hebrews and you have to hear what the Spirit is saying. And right in Hebrews 1 verse 1, God explains, <clears throat> God having spoken to the fathers long ago in the, voice, in, in the voices and writings of the prophets in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in many ways, so he has spoken, he was, there was foreshadowing through the Old Testament of the Christ to come, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one that was going to regenerate humanity and reestablish true humanity, okay? Humanity is awesome in its true form, in the image and likeness of God. Fallen humanity is very icky <laughs> in, in that it follows its father through the seed line of the serpent but true humanity don't discard humanity humanity is amazing because god created it to be amazing and now we're restored we're being we are restored and we're renewing our minds to that restoration Whew. so in the past he was speaking and, and highlighting through the prophets through the law and talking to the forefathers you know abraham isaac jacob he was guiding, guiding us to Christ. And it says, in many ways, so he, so God, we go to verse 2, has, past tense, in these last days spoken. So God has spoken with finality, the Amplified adds, which is amazing because this is it. He has spoken with finality to us in the person of, of one who is by his character and nature his son, namely Jesus, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, 
through whom also he created the universe, that is, the universe as a space-time-matter continuum. Verse 3, the sun is the radiance and the only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory and the light being, the brilliant light of the divine. He is the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word. Words. <laughs> words have power, especially the words of Jesus. you got to line your mouth and your heart up to that, because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Carrying, by his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. So there is a goal here. There's a predetermined course, there's a mosaic for the universe and what's happening on earth with humanity. There's a predetermined goal of everything. We get stuck in little bits and pieces, but there's a mosaic of restoration happening and, and we're going to God's plan. Your kingdom come, your will be done in creation on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom, your abode, <laughs> where your law reigns. So when he, when he himself, no one else, had, by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, he accomplished purification from sins and established our freedom from guilt. He sat down, revealing his completed work at the right hand of the majesty on high, revealing... <sighs> okay, sorry about that. I must have ran out of memory or something. So let's get to this. I guess I guess this is going to be a two-part video. So, he sat down, revealing his completed work at the right hand of the Majesty on High, and thus revealing his divine authority. <clears throat> work is finished. We're renewing our minds to this. And so, we want to focus on Jesus. We honor the Apostles. Paul said he is like a master builder building on the foundation of Christ and he's building his way up from that and he's helping people to get to follow him as he follows Christ and he's helping to establish amazing things and we see that by the Holy Scripture and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he wanted that included in the record so a lot of things included in the record we need to really open our eyes to. So, one of two last points. Hebrews 1 talks about God has spoken in finality through His Son, who is the perfect imprint, outraying of the divine glory of the Father, even though He just looked like a man, right? So, it's, it's, it's hard to recognize sometimes <laughs> if you don't understand what's going on. But, he is it. He doesn't call uh, angels sons. It talks about in the rest of chapter 1. It says the angels are ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, to accompany and protect those who will inherit salvation. So, yes, we talk to angels. We work with angels because they are part of our Father's house and part of our, our destiny that we are supposed to have help in doing this. So, sorry if that offends you, but angels are were created by God <laughs> to have a purpose. Back to the point. For chapter 2. Give give heed pay attention. For this reason, all of chapter 1. For this reason, that is because of God's final revelation in his son Jesus and because of Jesus' superiority to the angels. We must pay closer attention than ever to the things that we have heard so that we do not in any way drift away from the truth. So, we have to pay attention. We have to pay attention to Jesus because he's the final revelation. And, and everything that the apostles were doing is the same thing we're doing now is we're searching God, we're searching Jesus, and we're helping each other grow. And we're helping each other get connected to the Father so that we can seek Him ourselves and be confident in our relationship with Him.
that by measuring with the word and by learning to train our senses in righteousness and discern whose voice we're hearing and what we're seeing, that we are actually moving forward. We are still growing. What they, what they, I don't know how to word this without tripping religious people out. What they wrote, they wrote out of experience. They were experiencing, like they didn't have, what they wrote, they didn't have to read. Okay, so what they wrote was experiencing God, experiencing relationship with the Holy Spirit. And we are still doing the same thing and we are building upon that. We have the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. We have the doctrines of the apostles and we're moving towards perfection. And so in 2 Corinthians 3.18, a Pauline epistle, it talks about that we are all as with an unveiled face. We're taking the mask off. We're taking anything off that, that obstructs our sight with unveiled face. Our face is unveiled because, <laughs> I had to look this up, I have a lot of word in here, but I don't have book, chapter, verse memorized, so I have to do a lot of like words, phrase searching and stuff, so because we continued to behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another and this only comes from the lord who is the spirit so we have to realize that this is still in humility and not in pride that it's not like oh paul didn't know what he was talking about i have a divine revelation well no you have a intimate relationship with the Spirit, and He is guiding you. And you're constantly being transfigured to take on His image. And that's what Paul was doing. That's what Peter, James, and John were doing, and Titus, and Timothy. They were all doing this. And the mindset that I see a lot is that they capped it. Like, they figured out they figured it all out, but the Bible says that we, we can't figure God out. He's He's endless and infinite, you know, so we just have to really realize this is a never-ending journey of intimacy with the Father, and don't be offended if somebody has a different revelation than you. There's people that are way past us, you know, but they can only give us little bits and pieces at a time because they know our maturity level. <laughs> Paul was talking about his experience, I think, in 2 Corinthians uh, 12. 2 Corinthians 12, and he says that he, he, saw, he saw things that he couldn't even... There's no words to, des to describe what he was seeing, so he just... It was unlawful for him to speak on it, because if you can't explain it, you really shouldn't be talking about it. And he also says, many times he mentions uh, spiritual immaturity. And I could not talk to you guys as spiritual men because you're still immature. And he talks about how when we're among the spiritually mature, we release a higher wisdom. You know, So we have to realize that probably, most likely, everything that we have written of Paul is not always geared towards a mature spiritual person because he was still dealing with things like uh, in the Corinthian church. He was still dealing with people that were having sex with their stepmom or, or maybe their real mom, whatever, like crazy stuff. They weren't mature yet. You know, they were still dealing with carnal stuff and not just the unbelief stuff. And it's just like, we have to realize some of the stuff is written to babies. Some of the stuff is written to adolescents, to teens, to mature, to follow Jesus. To eventually you get, you're getting there. You know what I mean? So we can't camp around one portion of scripture and make a doctrine out of it that that's the cap. <laughs> no, 
God was very clear in Luke 9. This is my beloved son. Pay attention to this guy. <laughs> you know, Paul did that. He, he, he met Jesus, radically changed his life. Meeting Jesus changes your life. He focused on Jesus. He counted all that other Judaism and his excelling in the traditions junk. So I just wanted to encourage us to ask the Holy Spirit about this mindset. You know, don't take my word for it. Read your Bible. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Commune <laughs> with Papa, with Jesus, with Holy Spirit. But ask him about that mindset. Like, did Paul have it all figured out? Or am I supposed to pursue beyond what I see happening here? Is there more? Is there more for me? What do you say, Jesus? I know I say, but what do you say? Like the like the, the Beatitudes. You have heard or you have said this, but I say this, you know. <laughs> Jesus has a lot to say that's a lot different than what we say. So pursue Jesus. Honor those have, that have gone before us. They honor us. They can't be completed apart from us. We're all reaching perfection together, says in Hebrews. So, read Hebrews. <laughs> Ask the Holy Spirit to translate Hebrews for you. Learn with the Spirit. Get in your word. Get in your word. Please get in your word. I know a lot of people love their word, and I know a lot of people don't love their word as much as they could or should. And it's not a guilt trip. It's just you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> you don't know who this. You don't know who God says you are until you start renewing your mind in in the Word, in the Logos, and then you can start to understand which Spirit is speaking, and then you can get elevated even higher. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.